Polly Boyko reporting to us there from the Thames. So what's the next big thing, by the way? It's called 5G. Have you heard of it? Everybody's talking about it. Uh, frankly, I'm not a, the techiest guy in the world, so I actually had to Google it this afternoon to find out more about what 5G, what, what is 5G? So uh, I, I, I looked at Wikipedia, and here's what I found out that Wikipedia says. 5G, according to Wikipedia, is the latest generation of cellular communications targeting high data rates, reduced latency, energy savings, cost reductions, higher system capacity, and massive connectivity. There you go. A bunch of big words that may mean something to you, maybe not. But uh, it does sound impressive, right? Who wouldn't want all of that? Well, some might ask, there's got to be a catch. So joining us now is our correspondent, Michelle Greenstein, with uh, the latest on uh, 5G. And I guess the question would be that, here's the setup, ba -dum -bum. is there a catch? There is, just a small one. It might kill you. <laughs> Good to know. So you'll find- How it so? Well, a few days ago, actually, a group of scientists, doctors, environmental organizers, and concerned citizens got together, and they called for the urgent stop to the deployment of 5G. They mm. said that it's been proven harmful to human bodies, that this is an experiment on humanity, mm. and that this should be called a crime under international law. Let's talk about today's technology, what we okay. have going on today. Your phone is constantly sending electromagnetic magnetic fields in and out of each other, whether or not you're receiving a notification right now. All of our digital tech sends this data back and forth, right, using these invisible microwave radiation signal, signals, aka radio frequency radiation. Right. Uh -huh. That's today's tech. We have every cell tower, every router constantly pulsing with radiation, whether or not you're using it. Science shows that this causes DNA damage, cancer, among other things. But don't take my word that, for that, it. And that's just with 4G. That's just with today's technology. Before Correct. we get the 5G right now, you've got some of it, but exactly. not that much. Let's listen to what Dr. Sharon Goldberg has to say. She's a clinical researcher and an internal medicine physician. This is what she has to say about what we're using today. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. Um, we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. So if 4G is already doing some of this, and I imagine if somebody walks around all day with their phone next to their head for hours upon end, they might be able to, they might be doing some damage to themselves. But let's get beyond 4G. Right. How much more potentially dangerous will 5G be and why? Well, here's what's really dangerous about 5G. I mean, it's being sold to us as super awesome. You know, your toaster can talk to your door lock. It could talk to your self-driving car. Like you have a thermostat in your home that knows when you're home. You have these smart homes. Like it just really sold to us as being awesome. But the downside is that with this rollout, it will be impossible to exist in a city or to walk outside without being exposed. There's gonna be a cell tower in front of every few houses. Mm. And this means that you're your personal choices, whether or not you personally use a cell phone or hold it 10 inches away from your head, that cannot escape you from your radiation exposure. So let's listen to what Dr. David Carpenter, another public health physician and actually a signatory to this international appeal, had to say. I asked him about the safety testing that's been done with this 5G rollout. Okay. There's been no safety testing of 5G. Uh, the reason I think that it's dangerous is that there isn't any specific information to 5G, but we know that radio frequency radiation of 3G and 4G are associated with a whole variety of different human health effects. Everyone is going to be exposed to radio frequency radiation more continuously and at higher intensities, and that's going to cause more human disease. So if I was your big brother, or your dad, and you're being a little younger than me and probably have a little more awareness of this stuff, and I asked you, sure. 
So when you describe 5G, for those in the audience that maybe don't understand it, it's it's like this Alexa thing that's being sold to us. It's this thing in our homes where, as On you said, our toaster is talking to our phone and our phone is talking to... The Internet of Things, right? So I mean, if you go online and Google Internet of Things, it's just like utopian Everything vision. is connected, right? Everything, yeah, it sounds super amazing. That's what 5G will eventually want, hope to become. Exactly. And you're saying... It's too much. It's too omnipresent. Well, I'm saying I'm saying that there should at least be a public debate about the health effects. And the fact is, the government is completely not jumping on the ball. I mean, because of the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which says that no state or local government can regulate the placement of any cell towers, regardless of environmental effects. Right. That has really laid. There it is, right there. That has really laid the groundwork for this toxic infrastructure. What is that and we're looking at? I mean, I this hate is the Telecommunications Act of 1996. It's long. What, why am I reading it? This basically says that regardless of health effects, you cannot stop the deployment of 5G infrastructure. Uh. And the FCC, you know, which has no health expertise itself, is completely captured by the wireless industry. It's the same playbook that big oil used with climate change or big tobacco with cigarettes. You know, they're really deceiving the public and selling this to us as something that doesn't have a lot of risks. But you know who hasn't been fooled? the insurance companies. They are not selling any product liability policies that cover cell phone radiation <laughs> because they aren't fooled by these studies. And look, when people like That's find reports, right? it is. When, yeah. when usually like when you or I go online and find reports about wireless tech to find that it's harmless or that there's no evidence of harm, we're usually looking at industry-sponsored studies. Yeah. And it's not a question about whether we don't want to move toward new technology. We just want to make sure that that new technology is tested before we put the it out there. Know, so good correct. stuff. Hey, Michelle, as usual, good stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. Good report. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.